Hey, this is Evgeny and I welcome you in the eighth video in our land graph introduction series. Uh, we are starting shifting our uh, attention to a different topic and this is about uh, human. So it's, it was interesting in the previous videos to see that uh, you run the graph and it generated you something useful. But sometimes we need to interact into this process and add our own human opinion on the things. Right, it's also called human in the loop. So this is the topic of the next couple of videos we are going to record. And this is the first one. But and quick note, there is a link to Amazon website in the description. So please click on it. And then when you buy something somewhere, Amazon will reward me and provide a couple of cents. So I will be closer to my dream, a new keyboard. All right, thanks a lot. And now let's jump into the coding session. All right, so I propose to start from the place where we finished last time, and uh, this is Landgraf Studio. And if this is something really new for you, this is the first video you found on the channel about Landgraf Intro. Again, I'm drawing your attention that this is the video number eight. So uh, maybe it makes sense to go back and uh, take a look at the previous videos, because there we are gradually increasing our knowledge about Landgraf and uh, progressively learning the things. So please, if something is really unknown for you, go back and check videos. But we are starting here in the land graph and uh, land graph studio and last time I was showing the way how to operate here in the chatbot and uh, we even had some conversations. But what I didn't tell you last time that this land graph uh, studio is not only a graphical tool to represent your graph, uh, this is more about the way how you would deploy your graphs. And uh, in general, uh, remember, we, we were talking always about constructing graphs here uh, in the, as a Python uh, notebook and maybe Python script then, but that's not the correct way because it's still a good uh, idea to separate the concerns. So the production way how to deploy your thing is to use specific uh, long graph server and there you have your graph and uh, you can communicate with it via API and you have certain benefits. For example, then you can monitor different aspects. You can take an eye uh, on all the calls that happens in your graph and maybe fine tune it and do all this stuff. So you have a lot of benefits of this approach. And the first step in this direction, you can take this as LangGraph Studio because it's not only a visual tool, it's also a local server which runs your graphs. And if you take a look here, like I didn't mention last time, but anyway, we have it already. So our graph is up and running and we do have the URL. So let's give it a try and see how it works, right? Uh, we do have our local server up and running. I'm copying the URL of the server because the port here is a random one. It's very different every time you run it. And this is how it looks like. So uh, we have this get client. We are providing here our URL. And you see the port was different last time. Uh, then, for example, having the client, we can ask for a list of all the assistants or a list of all the agents that are run a server. So let me run it here. And we can see that at the moment uh, we have two. And the first one is chatbot. Uh, this one we showed already in the previous session. And another one is financial advisor. And this one I'm going to talk about. This one I created specifically for this video. And uh, it's here. But we'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, what's next? Like uh, every assistant has its own unique assistant ID. And for example, the first one is uh, this C4, ending C4 is uh, this one. It's sort of financial advisor. And uh, which way? But let's ask something about uh, the chatbot thing. And what we should do here, we, we are, uh, again, we are creating a new thread where client threads create, and then we can run it and wait the graph to process all the inputs and get us back the final result. And here uh, we have the thread, here we are providing thread ID, uh, here we should provide the assistant ID, but uh, since we have two, let's just copy paste this one. Right. And I'm asking the same like question we had uh, last time, schema with question, answer, and list of messages. And the same question we invented a couple of videos already back. Hi, I'm working on a Python project and I'm stuck. And let's see how it goes. So we made a call and we have the, this is the final state, uh, what we get back from the server. 
And the content says to you, how can I help you with that? And we have some technical information, like meta information, and also we have a question, answer, and uh, summary is empty, which is correct, right? Because we have too many, uh, too less messages to generate the, su the summary. And then maybe let's ask the second question, just to let me copy paste this idea as well. Like, if we are not interested in all these technical details, what we can do... Uh, what we can do, we can only uh, expose the answer. So let's ask and trigger our second question. And well, sorry, what was my previous question? And since the memory concept is in place, the answer would be, you mentioned that you're working on a Python project, which is correct. And maybe the last one, just to demonstrate you that uh, summary is here. I'm asking the third, uh, the third question, but this time let's uh, see the whole final state. And here we are, and you see the summary is here. The user is working on a Python project and struggling with JSON responses and so on. And this all is very cool if you think about that. But from other side, let's take a look if I run the same question in the studio itself. So I'm going here, I ask a question. And hi, I'm working on a Python project. I am stuck with handling API responses and submitted it. And finally, sure, I can help you with chat, uh, with that. Could you provide? So it's the same response, right? But what's different, if you take a look at that, we can see different states from even from uh, every single node. Like, for example, let me ask the second question just to generate, just to trigger the summarization node. And you see, we have much more. We have a start, we have chatbot, we have summarize. And uh, what, what I mean, what's my point, that uh, we do have here information after every node, while here we had only the final state. And this is the crucial, the key point, because if you want to interact somewhere, and we are talking about human in the loop, like somewhere in the middle, you have to be able to process this information not in a way that you get only the final response. You should be able to process this information step by step, so you have the opportunity to stop it somewhere in the middle, and then your human can interact with uh, your graph. So this is the key point. And how we are doing this? Well, that's uh, pretty obvious, right? That's the topic of our video. It's called streaming. And to demonstrate this concept, let's go back to the Python first, uh, Python, no uh, Python notebook. And uh, I'm defining the chatbot graph. It's pretty simple, even uh, simpler than it was before. We have the single node chatbot and just a pure LLM that generates responses for us. And talking about streaming, you have several modes which you can choose from. And uh, let's take a look at a couple of them. The first one is updates. And the key point in updates that uh, you have the back the information only that was updated so you don't have you, you can see only changes uh, what was different from the previous call and uh, let me demonstrate it to you so uh, this is the graph you're going to work on again it's pretty simple it's one single LLM machine and chatbot inside and that's it uh, we are creating a new thread and then we are generating a human message and uh, we are using stream operator this time and what's crucial here we are providing config as well which defines the thread ID and we are setting stream mode to updates. And I'm running it. We have a dictionary where every key is the name of the node. And there we have the state. But again, it's uh, updates, which means that uh, only new data is exposed. So we do have here, how can I help you? So see, we don't have here our human message because uh, the node didn't change the human message. The only one message was added, so we can see the single message here as an update. Well, let's keep our conversation going and then just uh, doing this pretty print thing and so we can see the output. And again, the same, right? Uh, it was the question. And at this point, since we have memory, our list of messages is pretty big already. It's uh, like four or five messages there. But the only update that the chatbot not performed was this, uh, the reply. And we can see it, the only one. So because uh, of updates, we can see only new stuff. That's the key point here. And the next stream mode, which you can use, uh, it's called values. And this is where all the values providing you back all the time. So you can, you can see the full state always. And again, the same example, um, 
which we had here, the only single difference is three models difference. So we have updates here and we have values here. And I'm asking exactly the same question. It's a new thread. And here you see we have two states. The first one was a human message. And this is the first state. And the second one was human message and AI message appended to the list. And take a look at that. The format is different this time, right? And let's try the same experimentation. But do the pretty print and uh, check how the conversation looks like. And see, you have the first session. Hi, I'm working on Python project. I can help you with that. Hi, I'm working on Python project. And that's because we do have already this in the memory. And then another conversation started. Hi, I'm working on Python project. I can help you with that. Hi, I'm working on Python project. And if I open in text editor, like it's growing here. Uh, but you can see, like, we can see the same state. It's kind of being added all the time on top, something like from the node, and you can see it all the time. So this is, uh, this is how this uh, values stream mode works. What else you can do here, uh, there is another mode which, uh, which is named messages. And uh, if you think about this, this is about uh, streaming not the final states, but you have the opportunity to stream even the responses from LLM. Like uh, the example you can see, normally if you're using chat tools like ChatGPT, for example, and you type a query there and you can see that your, the response uh, ChatGPT gives you back is not uh, printed immediately, right? But you can see the process of printing because it's also, it's because of streaming. So ChatGPT also stream all the tokens from LLM and prints it out. And then you can see the process. So this is what it's there, like uh, these messages. This is the technique how you can use it. And uh, again, I'm starting a new thread, the same kind of uh, question. Uh, the same, absolutely the same example, only the messages is different. So I'm triggering it. And we can see uh, now it goes back with chunks of information. And uh, what's interesting, we have a content here and we have metadata. And the content, you can see that it's the growing response, like I can help with that exclamation, what specific issue and so on. Um, and you can do something with this AI message chunks Normally, what you are interested in, for example, if you are watching on that, uh, you can use this long graph node. For example, you are interested in listening only in specific node and then uh, show the result or do something with it. So this is the example about. And uh, let's give it a try again. Uh, the same thing, right? Uh, we have messages, uh, but I'm printing only message content from the chatbot node. And see, this looks exactly like ChatGPT. You can see how it processes everything and prints it out. So this is the way you also can work with streaming using messages as stream mode. And uh, this is uh, streaming directly from LLM machine. Okay, now we understand the principles and we can do the same stuff uh, using, because again, I mentioned that already, again, this is like constructing all these queries is not the style you create your application in life. You have to reuse the server, long graph server, and you can do the same streaming thing, uh, communicating with your long graph server via API. So what we can do here again, uh, we have to define our URL and again, let me copy paste it because it was different the previous time. I was preparing this notebook and I'm listing all the assistants and we are high on working on Python project. So we are interested in chatbot. So we are providing this assistant ID. Okay, it's here already. And hi, I'm working on Python project. And uh, what we are doing here, we are calling client runs and stream. Then we are providing thread ID. We are providing which assistant we would like to reuse the messages we are sending to this assistant and the stream mode, the same messages. And then we are printing the chunks that we are getting back from the server. And you see it started populating stream parts. And interesting here, okay, we have a content which grows all the time with every chunk. And uh, the event type is interesting here. So we have messages partial. So this is the process of generating the response partial and then it finishes with messages complete when the whole response is ready and you can grab it here. This kind of stop signal was received. 
And maybe the last example here in the session, let's uh, reuse another graph, which is, uh, since should I invest in Tesla stocks, we are using another thing, which is financial advisor. And I'm grabbing this ID, it's C4 and C4 here. So it's correct. What we are doing here again, uh, we are streaming from the client with the thread ID. We created a new thread, a new conversation. Assistant ID is financial advisor. We have the input where we define should I invest. And uh, this time we are, stream, we are in stream mode with values. And uh, then we are trying to uh, show the messages. And for that, we are using the specific utility from uh, LangChain convert to messages. Let's take a look how it works. And see here we have this, we have a content, should I invest Tesla stock? We do have then tool call uh, with the name Look up stock symbol, then tool call happened, returning test LA. And then we have uh, another tool call with the name fetch stock data row. And then we do have history. This is the, uh, the data requested from external service. And then we have the content recommendation from the chatbot, from the LLM. So this is how it works. And this is um, this communication as a service. So if I scroll back, for example, and pick here, the financial advisor and so there like I can see that 40 like 50 seconds ago it was this conversation you can check it here as well so this is the data from the external service it's pretty long and then we have the the advice this was streaming and this is a very important concept for us for the next video to understand how we can interject and inject user interaction to this process so thanks for sticking with me in this video till the end I will see you next time. Bye-bye.